you, thank you. If you're here from yesterday, oh my goodness. It is for me the same day, but the video previously was the repot of the Lelia Flava. And I have to say that the reason I'm doing this, again, just to repeat why I'm changing setups here, is simply because I have all these beautiful little square pots and I want my Rapiculus Lelias to somewhat look equal. And they're getting quite big already in these round pots, so I want to graduate them up a little bit. And, and I like the uniformity of having them kind of look similar as best as possible. My other intention is as well to reuse the media that these are in. It's all inorganic stuff. So it's a mixture of lava rock and ceramics. That's why I'm picking some of the moss off the top. I don't need that as much. Now come the winter months. During the summer, it was awesome. But I want to start with my Lelia Regina here, because she is in the traditional setup that I use. The mix of all things inorganic. And I want to get her sorted out quickly because I've already done damage to her. She has another new growth coming that's squishing up against the pot there. And basically, I was so surprised to see how well my flower did in the semi-hydro setup that now I'm just a little bit nervous about doing what I'm doing. I'm going to do it as fast and efficiently as possible so that I don't change my own mind and just say, no, I'll just leave it, you know. These little ones are precious to me. I've already filled the pots with big lava rock chunks on the bottom. I'm going to add some akadama from, you know, the bonsai growing substrate, just so that the wicking can start immediately. And it fills around the lava rock very nicely in order to introduce a good, solid, straightforward wicking process. So that's the plan. And yes, I'm a little bit nervous because we're dealing with my favorite little ones and I don't want to mess it up. So all I'm going to do is try and get this one out without too many issues, without too much damage on the roots. The Flava was my first ever Rapiculus repot and it did so well, it actually took me by surprise and put me in a little bit of a state of shock and regret as to why did I touch it. But I'm going to do this anyway. I want my Rapiculus Lelias all to look somewhat equal, especially the bigger ones. And I just snapped off a root. Look at that. That's annoying. Now I see what I have in the pot here. What I'm going to do with this is use it for the Flava Solina because there's nothing wrong with these orchids. I don't mind mixing up the, the media at all. That doesn't phase me one bit. They're clean, they're healthy. They don't need to be um, separated anymore. I've had them long enough and I just broke another root. This is not going very well. Just one moment. Let's clean this up. And stop messing about with so much picking and all that business. I am now at least aware how delicate Rapiculus Lelia roots are because when these arrived in my collection a long time ago, they had no roots that I could judge anything by. And I say I don't want to pick, but I do not want any of this stuff to go into the pot if not necessary. So bear with me while I contradict myself and go about my business and calm down and just trust in what I know I should be doing and do it slowly.
There's a nice new growth coming there. Still the embryo stage, but it's there. Because you know, one thing is to panic because of the roots, and another thing is to panic and say you're doing something wrong. Clearly now, it has roots. Something, when I potted it up the first time when they arrived in my collection, they had absolutely no roots. So I'm already got a head start with roots to work with. So just slow down, calm down. I'm still kind of reeling from the experience with the flava. If you haven't seen that video, I'll post, I'll put up a card, put up a link in the description because I was so shocked I got all flustered. Instead of being pleased shocked, I was regrettably shocked. Why did I touch my orchid? Eh. Because I want the aesthetics? Yes, that's why. And it was growing a new growth, meaning it has new roots on the way. And from that experience, I jumped into this before I could change my mind. So stop being flustered. You have more here than you had when they arrived. So there's no need to panic or rush. Just do what you normally do. Strange how confidence goes out the window suddenly. And you're like, Whoops. you know, bumbling away. Well, me anyway. When it comes to orchids that are precious, precious, precious. Not that, not all of them are precious, but you know, some of mine are more precious than others. So there's that. Let's give you another little shower. From the top. It was so nice to know that these were pot down. And now I'm going to be looking for the same signs again to see how they react to this disturbance. Because as far as Rapiculus lalius goes, this is a first for me in repotting. And I have not heard anywhere online if roots on a Rapiculus lalia are going to throw a fit. So let me tell you when I find out and then we will all know. Maybe I can use some of the old material. Where are my holes? And I'm going to put her in at a diagonal. Oh, I can reuse that, that's great. Get her in it at the diagonal, let's wet everything up first. So we go from one setup environment into a similar environment, whether it's Ceramis or Akadama. Now I'm not going to push her into the corner because I have embryo growths at the end there. So she's going more into the middle. I would like to be able to do this beautiful long root justice. So like a diagonal like this. And then I'm just going to take my old media and fill her up. This is a mixture of sand, regular sand, not from the sea, horticultural sand, I guess is what you would call it, I think. And ceramics and small lava rock. Well, this is working out quite nicely. Now that I've settled down and got my Rapiculus Mojo going, I'm okay. <laughs> Let's take some and protect that root right there. There we go. I have a feeling in one year we're going to be doing this again because these guys 
when they grow, they grow. They don't stop. So I have space here and uh, maybe two more growth space back here. And then we'll see what we'll do when that time comes. So now I'm just gonna fill up with fresh, small lava rock around her. I want to be able to reuse some of the other media for the one that is in the semi-hydro setup. That's why I'm holding off filling up using that old media. Let's not make it too high. And because there were no roots in the back to speak of, I'm quite okay putting in the tag now. If there were roots, then I would have put the tag in before so as not to mess up anything that's in that corner. Okay, fingers crossed that you're gonna love this. The plan was not to do you any harm. And I apologize for the roots that I broke. Please don't hate me for it. And just water, water her in, as they say. The plan being that everything looks just like the other ones. One down. Let's check out my Flava Sulina. Now, I have expectations after my Lelia Flava, so let's see if there's anything to go on or if this is a completely different story because they're not all the same. There's two pieces in here and I'm getting new growths as well. Okay, that looks promising. That's more than I had to work with when she arrived. You can see these dead roots here. Those were the ones I only used for anchoring. So there's, there's a good sign going on here. I'm not as flustered now. But I want to get some of the moss out. No need for that anymore. This is going to be major, major media cleanup operation. And I cracked a root. Okay. Note to self, Rapiculus Lelia roots are delicate. I need a jet stream. Right, and that's how I'm going to leave this one. A bit of debris is not a big deal. There's the second one. Now, let me get a little bit organized here. I'll be right back. Same thing as before. I am going to, first of all, put the tag in because I don't know how the roots are going to be positioned. So I'm not going to be stabbing around in the dark, possibly damaging more. I'm going to be adding Akadama. 
to increase the wicking. You see how dusty this stuff is? It's worse. It's worse than um, Ceramis. And I actually did wash this. <laughs> Let's pat it in to fill in the blanks. And now I'm going to get the old media from the other one and fill her up. Let's create a little bit of a hollow here as well. Let's see how they're going to fit in. I have one growth there and this one grows from both sides. So it's going in the middle. Not going to mess about too much because these guys, they don't just have one lead. Once they're happy, they start with multiple leads. And let's finish off with the last of my ceramics. And I'm going to show you something about why and when I used sand throughout the middle and did the layering with the sand because there were no roots and I needed more humidity. And I only did it for two, like twice a year, every six months because look at the pot and you can see how the sand has gone down into the bottom, but it did its job for the root production phase at keeping a nice layer of moist environment around any new roots that were growing. So in this case, I'm not going to simulate that again because now I have roots, I'm sure She's going to be fine. This is not the problem that I'm worried about. If I'm worried about anything, it's that I disturb the roots and she's going to dump them. There's no need to put in sand at this stage because the job is pretty much done, you know? My issue now is I do not know if like Rapiculus Lelias dump their roots. And that is something I will have to find out and discover along together with you. Because like I said, first repots of Rapiculus Lelias. Let's get some small lava rock around there. Watching the little new growth, because I've done that as well. Knocked off new growth, simply because I was putting lava rock on the surface. trying to learn from my mistakes. And I can tell you, I have some ceramics left <laughs> again. Oh well, it's not much but I won't throw even what comes out of all this away after recycling. The cleanup and everything, nothing gets thrown away unless it's really in bad shape. Ceramis doesn't get into bad shape. Okay. I can fuss with these stones a lot much longer, but we'll see how it goes. First, let's fill up and make sure that everything is nicely coated and take it from there. And then I'm gonna clean it up. I'll be right back. And here they are. Oh my goodness. What a, what a task. I really did get nervous there, but Again, I have roots, which I've never had before. Got new growth, which 
sometimes I had to do work with and here I have a new growth and roots to work with which I didn't have before so I don't know why I panicked but hey some, sometimes these things happen so this is not a how to pot up a Rapiculus lalia as such this is my experiment with Akadama the how to video is going to be linked in the description but this is at least now to see our Rapiculus lalia roots that sensitive that they will dump them or will they just continue to grow and I'm going to keep an eye on the one that's down in there the second one down and see how it responds I haven't covered that up to give me some kind of an idea how it's going in the pot just by looking at one at least to gauge something but I like these little square pots and outside I have no space issues and that is why I don't mind bumping them up I don't have to bring them inside anymore fingers crossed at least that's the plan I hope what I did didn't affect everything else and then I have to bring them inside but for now this is it thank you for being patient with me while I stumbled my way and surprised my way through this repot I really appreciate your company and I hope that you have a wonderful wonderful day take care and stay safe please bye